Hey everyone, uh, welcome to D3JS in 10 minutes or less. My name is Jasper. I um, started the series so that I could share with you what I've learned over the past 10 years. So hopefully it will take you less than 10 years, hopefully less than 10 minutes to learn how to use D3. This is the table stakes video. What that means is that uh, this is the video I'll refer back to throughout the other courses, throughout the other series, uh, saying this is uh, why we use D3, this is what it is, this is observable, this is why we use observable. Uh, this will be kind of the, uh, the getting started video for the rest of the series. So uh, without any further ado, let's jump into it. So what is D3? D3 stands for Data Driven Documents. It is a low level JavaScript library used to uh, create data visualizations on the internet powers a lot of the charts and visualizations you see as you're browsing through websites. Um, it was created by a fellow named Mike Bostock when he worked at the New York Times. So when you think about the New York Times and all the interesting data visualizations and charts they have, that those were built with D3. Um, if you go to their website, you can see there's all sorts of interesting examples. Uh, we won't click through all of these today, but Suffice to say, it's a very powerful, very low level library, but with great power comes great responsibility and the learning curve for D3 is steep. I've, uh, it's taken me the better part of 10 years to learn it and I'm just now feeling comfortable. So what I'm hoping to do in this course is uh, break it down into smaller pieces so that it's easier for you uh, to learn and hopefully you can build a chart sooner than I did. Um, the main tool that we'll be using for this is called Observable. Observable was also built by Mike, uh, along with a lot of other fine, powerful folks, uh, powerful in their coding abilities, I should say. Uh, Observable is like a Jupyter notebook on the web for data visualization. What that means is that it has cells. Uh, you can share it very easily across uh, contributors. And you can also track lineage, which means if I build a chart and you like it, but you think you can make it better, you can actually fork my chart and build your own. And then the lineage actually tracks back. So credit is given where credit is due. So if I've forked something, let's say Mike built something and I fork it, you can see on my chart like, hey, this is great work, but Jasper actually built it based off of something that Mike did. So it's great. Uh, so that's what we'll be using. Everything I build on Observable will be available for you to see. I'll share all of the links within each, within the show notes, if you will. Uh, yeah, so this is Observable. So to sign up or sign in, you can see the call to action there in the corner. Um, I've already got an account, so I can't walk you through the sign up process because it's smart enough to say like, oh, this is Jasper. But what I can do is I'll is direct you to uh, the starter graph. And this is what we'll be using to, uh, yeah. this is what we'll, we'll be using to start all of our charts, at least to start. So let's see, okay, starter chart, where'd it go? Hey buddy. All right. So, uh, this starter chart will be the table stakes for any data viz chart we build in this course. Uh, it follows the uh, data visualization to design patterns that you might be familiar with if you use something like Tableau. Uh, what we're doing, we're bringing data in, we're structuring it, we're adding some sort of uh, chart parts to it, if you will, like an axis, title, and then we're applying styles to it. If you want to see the type of code we're going to be working with, you can just open this cell here and look at this JavaScript. So it's all contained within these brackets here. But again, you can see we're creating a chart, axes, and I'm gonna go into a lot more details on this in subsequent videos. This is really just to get you kind of comfortable with things so that I don't have to explain it in those 10 minute chunks. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's observable. There's a lot more here, which we'll dig into in future episodes. Uh, let's jump over to some helpful resources. These are the things that are kind of my my uh, my lifeboats when I'm out in the out in the ocean trying to say like, oh, what do I do now? Um, I've got a chart. How do I actually make it look good? Uh, so two resources. First is the D3 API. Really, really solid documentation. Like D3, it's very very dense, so it can be hard to read through and parse at times. But it's all there at the the library is extremely well documented. That's one of the strong, uh, the strengths of the library. 
So you can see through here, it's got examples, got a for color specifically, it shows what they look like. It is very, very helpful. Um, the other uh, resource I use a lot is actually AMDN, right? So the Mozilla Developer Network, um, specifically around SVGs. Uh, what D3 does behind the scenes is it draws SVGs, which are scalable vector graphics. So again, just using this low level documentation from, from the source, it says the different things that you can do to say a circle SVG element or a rectangle or a path. Again, We'll go into this in much more details in subsequent videos, but these are the resources I use the most. Again, I'll share links to all of these in the show notes, the show notes. Um, but yeah, so those are the resources. That's the high level walkthrough. Um, that's, that's really a wrap on this ta table stakes video. So if you found this useful, give the video a like, subscribe, leave a comment. Um, <laughs> I'm doing this to help. So. If you found this unuseful, like not helpful, if you have questions or if you disagree, also please comment because if you know better than I do, the people who are using this to learn can learn from you as well. This is a community project. We're all gonna do this together. Um, yeah, so that's about that. So I uh, can't wait to uh, see you on, on the next video. Take care and uh, see you next time.